Okay, so Raghav, we would like to start with uh, you telling us what is the current scale of operations at Inverted Energy for electric mobility applications. So Inverted Energy is uh, one of the, the battery pack uh, manufacturing companies in the electric mobility and the energy storage space. Uh, we started this company in 2017. We are three graduates from IIT, uh, which started uh, with, the, with the broad philosophy of bringing energy independence uh, uh, to every individual, uh, uh, every individual. So that's the broad philosophy with which we started. Uh, in the last six years, we've done uh, multiple uh, things within the energy storage and the mobilities uh, in the mobility space. We largely focus on the electric two-wheeler, electric three-wheeler, and the L5 category in the mobility space. And in the energy storage space, we do anywhere between uh, uh, anywhere in the residential, commercial, industrial applications, ranging from a five kilowatt hour battery pack to as high as a uh, as a megawatt hour battery pack uh, for any of these applications. Today, uh, we do about uh, 10,000 battery packs for the uh, electric two-wheeler space. We do about uh, uh, 1,000 to 1,500 battery packs in the electric three-wheeler space. We do a couple of hundred in the in the L5 category, and we do a few few projects in the energy storage space. If you talk in terms of megawatt hours, we do about anywhere between 200 to 250 megawatt hour on an annual basis. Uh, we currently have our uh, capacity installed capacity of about uh, 500 megawatt hour. We are in the process of adding another 500 megawatt hour, which will be live uh, in the first week of July. So by then, uh, we will take our production capacity to about a gigawatt hour. Uh, so we are super, super glad to uh, to to hit this milestone of uh, reaching a gigawatt hour, which we sort of never imagined when we started this company. But yeah. Okay. So when you said uh, 10,000 batteries for two wheelers, so is that uh, your annual number? No, no, that's our monthly numbers. So that's all of the numbers that we've mentioned are monthly numbers. Okay. Uh, the total megawatt hour that we do, that's the annual number. Okay. Understood. Understood. So, uh, so recently, uh, Inverted Energy's batteries also got the certificate for the AIS 156 uh, uh, phase two, uh, amendment three phase two. So can you walk us a little through the process, how you guys approached it and what was the most challenging part about uh, going for that certification? Uh, so uh, honestly, Priyakshi, uh, the AIS uh, 156 uh, Phase 2 uh, Amendment 3, uh, it was a very, very welcome change that the industry desperately needed. Uh, there was a very, very strong need towards standardization uh, to build greater reliability and safety in the product. Uh, so there were a lot of initiatives that we were working over the last 18 months to build higher reliability and safety within our battery pack. So when the, the notification came, uh, we were honestly less surprised uh, uh, with, the, with the requirements of it. Uh, one of the things that uh, took us by, by surprise was one requirement which mentioned that the batteries uh, need, to, uh, need to be able to withstand a temperature of 300 degrees Celsius. If the thermal runaway happens, the propagation should not spread to the other neighboring cells. So that is something that we were honestly not prepared for. For the all the other uh, requirements in the standard, we were fairly well prepared and uh, we were we were up to the mark uh, on that. But this was one condition that sort of uh, really uh, got our heads racking. Uh, and that is when we sort of started working on it and uh, uh, we, we, we explored multiple uh, thermal management solutions, which uh, exist globally, uh, which are probably more suitable for the Indian context. Uh, it took us three months of extensive testing in our R&D lab to really fine tune and figure out what is the right solution that we can uh, uh, that we can deploy from a mass production perspective and not really from an R&D perspective. Uh, so it did take us good three months of very rigorous testing uh, to actually come down to uh, the final solution that we could deploy into our battery pack. So this really uh, was one of the biggest challenges that we had faced. Uh, uh, and the solution that we've sort of worked out is technology agnostic. Uh, that uh, that solution is suitable to uh, any sort of uh, uh, cell chemistry that we work on, whether it is NMC, LFP, uh, and multiple other technologies that exist. So our broad philosophy was that we want to find a solution which is which is uh, technology agnostic. So yeah, so this was this was the most challenging part of it. Right, and right now uh, both your two wheeler batteries and three wheeler batteries are uh, AIS one fifty six phase two amendment three certified. 
Is that correct? correct. So uh, yes. So uh, our L2, uh, our uh, all L category vehicle battery packs are certified, uh, whether it is the two wheelers, three wheelers, and the L5 category. Uh, the range varies anywhere from a 1.5 kilowatt hour pack to as high as a 10 kilowatt hour pack. All of these battery packs are phase two certified. Okay, and these battery packs, which is the what is the chem chemistry of these battery packs that you are uh, it, uh, supplying? It is, both, it is both LFP and NMC. Okay. And as I mentioned previously, whatever solution that we wanted to figure out, we wanted it to be uh, chemistry agnostic. It is not that we wanted to find a solution only for the LFP battery packs or for the NMC battery packs. We wanted to find a solution which is suitable irrespective of the chemistry. Okay, understood. So uh, can you also walk us through what are the best practices for battery pack manufacturing that your company follows? Right. So uh, we actually break down the problem into multiple aspects. Uh, so there are broad three facets uh, when you design a battery pack. One is the overall mechanical design, which ensures uh, the structural strength or stability of the battery pack. From a mechanical perspective, how do you ensure uh, uh, that the, it is able to handle uh, the various sort of vibrational impacts that is that is subjected to the battery pack? Uh, the second is the thermal aspect of it. The third is the electrical aspect of it. And the fourth is the, uh, the electronics aspect of it. So whenever we sort of go about designing a new battery pack or a new variant of pack, these are the broad four facets that we keep as a pillar of designing any new pack. So a couple of best practices that we use is that uh, we should be able to ensure that the heat dissipation from the core of the cell, from the center of the cell, should be as optimally managed and uh, we should be able to close the battery, uh, should be able to keep the battery temperature as close to the ambient temperature as possible. So uh, our thermal solution is designed accordingly. Whenever we, whenever we design from a mechanical perspective, we subject our battery packs to uh, 3G vibrational uh, uh, testing. So it ensures that even in the harshest of the conditions, our battery pack is able to ensure their structural integrity. We ensure that uh, the electrical design is done in such a fashion that uh, the resistance, the IR, the DC IR and the AC IR is optimally managed. And uh, electronically, we ensure that uh, we use the right uh, communication protocol. We are able to get the data at the highest frequency. We are able to get the data at the shortest interval possible. We are, we are able to capture all the, all the data parameters of the battery pack. Uh, we also work very extensively on the, uh, the SOC uh, estimation of the battery pack. So we use a lot of data to fine tune our SOC logic. So these are some of the aspects that we work when we design a battery pack. And obviously a lot of this is dependent on the, the cell chemistry that you use. For example, in an LFP cell, uh, when, you, when you discharge it at high C rates, the temperature increase, the delta T is, is relatively lower than what we experience in an NMC cell. So our thermal management solutions are designed accordingly to ensure that the thermal conductivity of the material that we're using is, is managed appropriately so we are able to dissipate the entire heat out. So for example, in electric uh, two-wheelers, we use extrusion in the L5 battery pack because the, the cross-section is relatively wide, wider, we use die casting. So these are some of the design philosophies that we use while, uh, while uh, designing our battery pack. We, we spend a lot of time in actually uh, building the first prototype because we believe that once you get the right prototype, then manufacturability of that is relatively easier. Uh, so we do not rush the process of, of designing and we really sort of uh, very exhaustively uh, look uh, the battery pack design from all of these four aspects so that we're able to, uh, to really uh, uh, understand if we, are, if we are doing any any errors from a design perspective. So we do, we have proper DFMEA, uh, PFMEA to ensure that we, we take all of those failure modes into consideration while designing it. Okay, understood. So uh, if we take one step back uh, from battery manufacturing, we go to the cells that uh, uh, any battery manufacturing company imports. So what is your quality control process at that level? Can you walk so, us through? So we, uh, so we, again, have a very, very rigorous process uh, in onboarding any particular cell supplier or onboarding any particular cell chemistry. So we uh, have a six month evaluation process before we onboard any particular cell or cell supplier. So the first is that uh, we get a uh, thousand samples from a particular cell supplier. We subject it to life cycle testing. So we do accelerated testing 
of uh, any new cell for about 1000 plus cycles to really know what kind of capacity retention we are able to see in uh, the IDC condition, in an ideal condition, what is the capacity retention we're able to see after 1000 cycles. So that is one uh, test that we do. Then we do, uh, we will subject uh, that cell to uh, various C rates and uh, uh, various uh, different conditions which are simulating the actual uh, conditions on the road. So we will do this for 50 cycles to see that what is the deviation from uh, the IDC curve to the real curve. So we will see that that deviation should be as minimal as possible. We we do to uh, we we subjected to crush testing. We subjected to drop test. We do to nail penetration test. So all of we have a list of uh, 16, 17 tests that we conduct on the cell before we say that this cell is good to go. Uh, for the application that we would want to uh, use it for. So that's the first process. The second process is that when we deploy a particular cell for mass production, uh, so we uh, subject all of these cells to 100% grading. So all the cells that we get are uh, graded for capacity. They are graded for voltage. They are graded for IR. And we have a very, very narrow window of binning. So we are able to ensure that if there is any deviation from the sample cell that we'd received, so we refrain from working with that particular cell supplier uh, going forward in the future. Uh, also, we uh, we ensure that we work with uh, extremely reputed manufacturers so that we understand that uh, that there is deviation, there is limited deviation to the specifications that they've mentioned. But we have a very very thorough cell evaluation process before we onboard any particular cell. Okay. Uh, so uh, you said that you started the company in 2017. So when did you started making the battery packs for specifically for EV applications? So we started making battery packs for EVs in early 2020, just before COVID is when uh, we sort of shipped out our first couple of samples. We've been working on the product from 2018, but from 2018 to uh, entire 2019, we sort of uh, spent a lot of time in understanding the product, building capability on the product, doing the cell evaluation, pack evaluation process to really understand that what is the right product for the right application. So we didn't really rush to uh, to uh, to get to mass production or to get to scale. So we spent good two years before we got, got into mass production. But our first battery was shipped out in early 2020. Okay. So it's almost three years since you have been making right. uh, batteries for electric vehicle applications. So from your experience, have you uh seen experience any kind of shift in the oem's approach towards selecting the battery uh during this time from when you started to right now when the norms are getting stricter and there is more awareness uh, to evs so there has been a significant shift a significant shift in the oem's mindset and in the battery manufacturer's mindset and the overall ecosystem right uh so people have become a lot more quality conscious uh, people have become a lot more conscious of finding the right battery pack for their application, right? So there is nothing called as a as a great battery pack in isolation. A battery pack is great in the context of the vehicle, right? So now we do thorough vehicle integration. We do uh, thorough testing of the battery with the vehicle before we get into mass production. In 2020, uh, honestly, we never really did vehicle integration. We always looked at battery as a product standalone. We never really uh, looked at battery as a product in context of the vehicle, right? It is, it is. Uh, you have to look. You you have to look at the product in totality, right? Uh, so that is something which has significantly changed over the last uh, uh, three years. People have become more conscious. Uh, people have become uh, more selective in their approach. Uh, they ask a lot of questions as simple as the connectors that you're using, right? If you if you look up at uh, battery packs sold in 2020, they were extremely rudimentary battery packs. And the industry overall has significantly moved forward from that to today, wherein people are really talking about thermal solutions. People are really talking about uh, cell technology, people are really talking about life cycle testing. I don't think so. All of this happened in early 2020. So uh, overall, uh, great for the industry. Uh, obviously, uh, competition is getting intensified because of which uh, people are becoming even more conscious about uh, some of these facets, right? Uh, uh, because uh, 
2020 was too early for the market to really understand. Now there is greater knowledge, there is greater awareness. The consumers have started asking tougher questions. So uh, automatically there is greater awareness in the ecosystem overall as such. So and these standards which are come across by the Ministry of Road Transport are obviously again driving uh, push towards uh, understanding the battery pack in in uh, in uh, in depth. And uh, next two three years are going to be extremely. Uh, critical for the industry overall and uh, we believe that there's going to be uh, a humongous shift in uh, how we look at EVs today to how we will look at EVs in the next couple of years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Raghav, is the BMS uh, also manufactured in-house? When we started out, we were, we were using uh, uh, imported BMS, uh, we were using off-the-shelf products available in the market. Uh, in the last 18 months, we've completely indigenized our own battery management system. Uh, we've built our own product uh, on the 18S platform uh, for anything which is above the 18S platform. We still are dependent on an external vendor for the battery management system, but slowly and steadily we will, uh, we will indigenize and we will uh, take this uh, in-house entirely because we believe that it's an extremely critical component and uh, it requires greater understanding, especially at the battery manufacturer's end. And hence, we are completely aligned on the fact that uh, and committed to the fact that we would want to uh, have our own uh, design on the battery management system. The, the manufacturing could happen at any EMS provider or externally, but the design and the component selection would be completely done indigenized. And uh, given that fact that we are working on uh, a deep SOC SOH algorithm, we would want to embed the same in the in the BMSs that we're using. Uh, when you say uh, 18S, can you explain what you mean by that? So uh, any batteries which is built on a 48 volt and a 60 volt platform, our BMS is equipped to to handle that by itself. So anything which is on a 72 volt platform and above, uh, we have to rely on an external BMS. Okay. Understood. Understood. So uh, also tell us about what all pieces of the battery value chain are you uh, trying to localize? What is your focus on building, uh, you know, domestic capabilities uh, and what kind so, of success have you seen? Yeah. So everything apart from the cell uh, uh, is something that we're focusing on, whether it is the, uh, the, uh, the extrusion, whether it is a die cast, whether it is the thermal material, whether it is the, the battery management system, whether it is uh, the bus bars, uh, everything we'll, we'll indigenize and we are almost in the process of completing our indigenization. Uh, most of the components we've already indigenized in the next couple of months, we will indigenize the balance components. Uh, cell is the only thing that we'll have to rely on uh, external uh, parties, uh, whether it is a Japanese company, Korean company or a Chinese company. Uh, but barring that, everything will be indigenized and local. Okay. Understood. Uh, and also, if you could uh, give me, uh, what is your vision for the next uh, two to three years? Where do you want? With what is what are your plans for inverted energy? So we uh, we at Inverted Energy are a are a deep battery tech company. We will uh, cater to any and every any any and every application that entails energy storage as a requirement, whether it is mobility, whether it is uh, whether it is energy storage whether it is uh, retail residential applications like home inverters, battery packs, we want to be everywhere. So uh, maybe not in the next th uh, two to three years, but in the next de decade, we want to be a household name. We want to be uh, somebody who's present in every, every household, uh, whether in the form of EV, whether in the form of uh, backup, whether in the form of your industrial UPS, UPSs, whether it is data centers, we will be there everywhere. So yeah, that's that's our that's our vision. And energy storage is going to be the centerpiece of all of this. And we will uh, slowly and steadily move towards it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Raga, for your time. Thank you for all the great answers that you gave me. Thank you.